Hey everyone, Mike McClay from amazing.com and Zoof Seller Software. And today we're going to talk about how the best sellers in your market, they're not your competitors. I know it sounds counterintuitive, but it's true. And the reason I know that is because my friends Mel's and Sean here from IntelliV have all kinds of research to show exactly why that's not the case. Mel, Sean, welcome to the video today. It's a pleasure to be here. Mel, Sean, why don't you guys tell me exactly what that means? Sure. You know, most Amazon sellers and brands, they compare themselves with the best sellers. If you, if you notice, some categories have like 1,500 products or more. Um, it's not the best sellers that are your competitors. Of course, it's like the pinnacle of the category. But there are so many variations of product where you distinct yourself from like the best sellers um, that your best sellers are not your competitors. And there's actually a story that we have that backs it up. We had a small group session and there was a guy in there and he was asking like, I'm trying to launch a product and it's not working. What should I do? What can you guys help? His product was priced with 35 bucks. So we said, okay, great. Let's check the market and see what happens. Like what is the rest doing? And we found out that the top 10 sellers in his category, in the subcategory were selling for 17 bucks on average. So his price 35 was like twice as high. So we said, okay, you know, what kind of comparisons do you have for the same price tag? And actually there was one competitor among 1600 different products that had the same price tag. Everybody else was cheaper. So we said, okay, you know, this is, it's not going to make it. I mean, you, you either lower your price or stop selling the product. I mean, that's where it could be that simple. But then we actually, uh, he was able to lower his price, but then we said, okay, now look a little bit deeper. So we found out that his product um, had a specific um, a solution for a specific demand. So we said, okay, great. What other products are out there? that are also special, the same way special, or that help with a solution for the same problem as your special solution is a solution for. We found seven products that had a solution for the similar problem. We said, okay, check those seven competitors. Like what is their total sales? What is their market? What is their keyword? What, is they, what are they doing? So we actually shifted his focus from the best sellers towards these seven products, which actually were his competitors. That actually created like a, a flywheel on its own. His competing market did go over. The total sales of the total competing market, 1,600 products, was 18,000 units of sales per day. And he was doing like between zero and 10, like very minimal. What we found out is that he could lower his price to 28 bucks, which was exactly the price, the average price of the seven real competitors that we found. The total sales of these seven products was 320 units per day. So in his niche of niches, that was a market of 320 units per day on average. So then we made a plan of how can you get like a fair slice of that pie. That resulted with the new approach and focusing on these real competitors. Right now, he's selling like over 100 units a day in this specific category. So he get like, and I'm not sure what the market is right now, but I think he has like 30% of the market share among these seven real competitors of his. So that's that's how important it is to focus on the right specific products, right? And not on the best sellers. The best sellers are selling to everyone. Sometimes it's a one size fits all solution or they they sell like the cheaper versions uh, or they have such a stable position that actually anything that they do doesn't matter. It's very bad to compare to these top of the pinnacle listings, right? That's why we say shift it to the to the products where you that are your real competitors. That's super important to do. So he was trying to compare himself to the, all the products doing, you know, 1600 units a day or whatever, crazy number a, a, a day. And you add it together, getting between one and 10 sales a day. But when he focused on the right ones who had smaller volume, because they're more expensive, able to get up to a hundred units a day, just by focusing on his true competitors. Exactly. And it was like one situation, but there's like numerous that we have. One of the failures that so many people make, and we've made it in the past, I know, is just like you said, going after just the, the top sellers with another Me Too product. Nowadays, the products that we see that are having the best success are those that stand out. They do something as good, if not better, than the true competition out there. The other thing too, just to throw in there, is that if you look at Amazon New Tool, it's available. If you do, if you are brand registered, um, there is Product Opportunity Explorer, and it allows you to enter in a keyword quarry, say, you know, spatula, and what it'll show you is Amazon breaks out all these categories of needs. So if you do a spatula, you're going to see that there's multiple subcategories that Amazon is already breaking out. That's actually a really good starting point to kind of uncover if there is already like a distinct customer need that Amazon is classified. 
but that is one good place where you can find the niche of niches. Now, the other thing too, just to throw in there, which I think it goes without saying, when you benchmark against the right competitors, one of the key things is you have to take into account who you're talking to, the consumer you're talking to. So when you um, reorient yourself to your true competitors, you look at your listing and you look at your sales copy, you look at your positioning and the features you're, and, or benefits you're focusing on and make sure it clearly speaks to that market as well too. That's another key distinction. If you uncover that niche and you speak to that niche and you present your offer better than your competitors, that's, that is a formula for success. All right, this is great stuff. So one thing I'd be curious to know is, is there a way to see like how you see where my product fits into all those competitors that are out there? There's something that we've learned a couple of years ago, one of our marketing managers who worked with like bigger companies. And he, he actually teaches us the BCP model. The BCP model stands for basic core premium. And every product you can basically classify in one of these three sections, right? So basic, which is the cheap knockoff kind of solutions that you can find a lot on Amazon, to be honest. Then we have the core product. It's where the most sales are made, good quality for good price. And then we have the premium and premium actually is like the higher end solutions. The, the core and the premium is where we advise where you should be selling. Should stay away from the basic. Basic is, is the lowest end of of any product. So it's basic core or premium where you actually are, are selling your products. Most of the sales are made in the basic and early core, but the most money is made in the you know end of the core and the premium, but, but that's like least amount of units. And what might turn out if you find out that your product is in the premium, because you have some elements that are at, you know very good for a specific solution. What we found out multiple times is that people selling a product for 17 bucks actually had like real competitors that were selling for 30 to 40 bucks. So they could raise their price after they did the right investigation because they turned like they found out what their true competitors were. So they, but then they made like less sales, but way more money. And I think that's what we all want, right? Yeah, I agree. And I also imagine that if you're in that core up to premium, that's where you're building an asset too. That's where you have a brand that you could sell later on because who's going to want to buy a basic me too product? Yeah. True. So yeah, the kind of calculations goes like, what well, we always say, I, I'd rather sell 65 units for a $44 product with a 30% margin and I make more money than when I sell 1,000 units for $12 with a 7% margin, right? You see the numbers, it makes sense. You know, and it, it comes back to product sourcing. Where do you start? Do you want to have like the cheapest product to win it from the best sellers? No one thing for sure. High trees get high winds. Is that what they say? It's actually a Dutch saying. <laughs> Never heard of that, but I will be using it from now on. You know, so I think product sourcing is probably an entire topic, you know, and customization and building the right product that we can go into in a whole nother video. Um, if you guys are available to do that. Sure. Uh, but this is, you know, kind of an eye-opening for me as well to realize, you know, that people are focusing on all the best sellers. Those most likely are not your competition. What can people watching this video, what are their next action steps in order to, to implement exactly what you guys talked about today? Well, there are some, some steps that you can take. Define the market that your product fits into. So you have to find out what is my unique selling proposition that my product has. If you know that, find other products that have the same type of solution or they have a solution for the same problem. If you're selling a supplement, for example, uh, there are certain people that have an allergy for one of the common ingredients in a certain supplement. And you have a supplement with a different type of ingredient then you have something to offer as a solution for the people that have that allergy. So then you have a premium product serving a specific need for a specific group of people. So you have to find out what is that unique selling proposition that your product has. Second of all, uh, is if you, if you know that, then you have to find what is the total sales in that market. I would say take the top 10, their sales, what is their daily volume that they're doing? What is their average price? And then you know what is your position in that market. And then you have to understand what makes your product as good or better. What can you improve after you learned it from like those other listings? What are they putting in their title? What are they putting on their secondary images? But more important, what do, what do people say in the reviews? Read the reviews. From that, you study it. I was giving a short answer. I, I, I realize it's like a long answer, but it's not, it's not an easy topic anyway. Uh, but then if you read all that information, you harvest the data, and then you try to make changes to your listing to start selling your unique selling proposition. It can be done in many stages. You can do it like start today, finish, end of today. So you can have like an entire panel to do it for you. Most important is take action. No, I mean, it makes Just perfect start. sense to me, Mel. First, 
way to solve a problem is to understand what the problem is and be very honest, know where you fall in the whole BCP product model. And if you're in that basic, then you have some hard questions. You have to ask yourself about whether that's the product. And then once you know where you're at, hopefully you're in that core or the premium, who are your competitors and how do you stand out? And then how do you make some changes to show that on your, on your tile, product tile, right? Exactly. Awesome. I think that's some great steps. Hopefully anyone watching this video can take that and implement it today. If you don't like the answers, like maybe it's not, your product doesn't have something that really stands out. Uh, we're going to do a whole nother video on how to look for products that stand out and the best way to find them, source them, and figure out exactly what the market's looking for out there. But for this one, go out there, see exactly where you stand among your competition, make some changes as you can to start really standing out and let us know what kind of results you get and how, what was the time they need to wait? It's about four days or so. The algorithm normally takes four days okay. before they start like giving you some extra juice. Don't expect any, anything to happen in four days. Uh, if anyone watching this video uh, has any questions, drop them below here, like, share the video, and definitely pay attention because we're going to have more videos coming up, deep diving into other topics. The next one's going to be sourcing and how to really get a product that's going to stand out. So see you guys in another video very soon.